Hello students, this is your virtual tour of the workshop, the woodworking workshop. So, this is the door. Let's go in. Currently, you can see that the main doors are closed. Uh, normally, when you work in here, we will open that so that the dust and everything that gathers here can escape. We will also put on the ventilators that is there in the ceiling so that you have enough breathing space and fresh air to accomplish what you want. So this is my desk where you will find the drawing boards. These are the drawing boards that you will draw your drawings in if you are here. In your third year we will give you the complete technical drawing set so that you can do isometric drawings on the thing. Let's go over here. There is the main power supply. Uh, you will see that we switch off all the power when we're not working here. So do not actually try and attempt to switch on the power. Uh, we, me and Mr. Manas will do that for you. Okay, then we have the storeroom. Uh, as you can see, it's only me and Mr. Manas that are allowed to go in there. Okay, now these are the two racks. You can see there are various different tools in here. I will tell you which one all of them are just in a moment. So this is your tie square. It's used to measure squareness. Okay. You can see we have different sizes of them. And then this is an adjustable one that can be set to different degrees. Here we have the steel rule. It's not a ruler, it's a rule. The reason for that, you see it ends on zero at the edge of the rule, not uh, a little bit from the side as is done with a ruler. Then we have your wooden mallet. This is to drive chisels, okay? Then we have your ball pin hammer, okay? These things here is called a scriber. It's to make markings on your work pieces. And then we have a single punch. This is used to drive in nails and make holes. Okay. Then we have your tendon saw. You can see we have different sizes, different colors, and different materials. These are just normal hand saws. They are used for delicate work. And then we have a figure saw. A figure saw is used for very, very delicate work in work. Okay. Below there, we have what is called a marking gauge. Both plastic versions and wood versions. Okay, the wood versions is actually more accurate than a plastic one. So if you use one, try and use the wood ones. Then we have a uh, some shears to cut through metal and all the spaces that are missing currently there the tools are actually there because those are the ones that uh, you are going to draw okay then we have some measuring tape and some sanding paper in a block it makes it easier to sand if you use a sanding block okay let's move on now you will see everywhere that we have all these um, safety instructions just always be careful and read what the safety instruction says it will help you and will make you stay safe then we obviously have the safety goggles the safety goggles is so that things can't get in your eyes small wood pieces and blind you and those things and then we have our Phillips screwdriver and our flathead screwdrivers uh, there are a few missing because I moved a few of them there But otherwise you will see blue for the Phillips and red for the flathead Then we move on to your wood chisels Now you will see they are all color coded The white is 25 millimeters 
the green is 12 millimeters 10 millimeters and 6 millimeters they're right at the bottom you can see all the files and apparently a broom that I forgot to remove let's just remove that now you will see that some of them do not have heads handles uh, please do not use a file that do not have a handle it is actually very dangerous and it can stick into your hand so how do you use those that have handles now you will see they come in different shapes different sizes this is a round one this is a half moon one and then you have like a wasp one and a normal fine one okay now when you come into the classroom the first thing you will notice is there's a word called bags and it follows around here now this as you can see is the kitchen it is where you clean your hands but please do not throw anything in there you can see that actually some students have thrown in chemicals in there in there and what that caused is actually that we cannot clean it out anymore okay so it's just to wash your hands do not throw chemicals in there and then this nice space here this is where you put your bags okay so they are nice and safe and out of the way okay now once you are here in practical we will use this whiteboard to give you instruction you can see mr manas has given some instructions about joints that he did for students last year now you will get the same instructions okay now here are all the tools again now you can see the compass here and the scribers the dry square the rule the saw the chisel and all of them i will and this is the g clamp by the way and this is wire cutters this is combination pliers and this is no pool of pliers now i will send you detailed photos of each of these tools so that you can draw them in freehand okay so do not worry okay now obviously you can see those are workbenches and this is called a vice clamp okay sometimes called a bench clamp uh, this is where you will put in your wood to work on it okay now i have here samples of different wood we use you see we have these small fun pieces of wood then we have thicker rich hardwood we have some compressed wood you see it's just lots of wood chips compressed and glued together some pine which is very common we use it a lot another compressed wood you see the difference between this compressed wood and this one right they are still all a manufactured man-made wood these are natural these are man-made okay? some more pine and we have some little piece of dolf now dolf is very expensive in Namibia okay so the chance that you are going to work with it is not so high but if you give us a good project and you show that you are competent we will allow you to use the more expensive wood okay okay now let's move on power tools now in your second year you will not be using power tools even if you were to work in the practicals here now power tools comes from the term that it actually uses electricity power now you can see that the blades and things are really dangerous especially these saws and so we will have to supervise you before you start using them we do not want to have you missing a finger okay let's move on uh, up there you will find my office mr manas is actually in the workroom next door uh, those are my aprons and my safety gear hard hat safety gloves and noise cancelling headphones okay it is all to make it safe for me to work here now we recommend that you get your own safety gear uh, if you cannot we will provide you with certain safety gear but not as complicated as I have then we have our clamps 
Most of the clamps are divided into two groups. It is the G-clamp, which is this one. Because it looks like a G, obviously. G. And then you have your F-clamp. You see? F. It's called the F-clamp. So you have different sizes, different weights, and all those things. Big ones, right? Now here is a little bit uh, disorganized. I'm still organizing it. Uh, where you can find your planers, which is to make wood nice and smooth. They have blades there, so be careful. All your various screws and nails uh, can be found here. You can see, still organizing it. Now in there, you can see staff only. That is where we keep the big expensive wood. Please do not go in there. Moving on. We are, here we have some saws. We have your hacksaw. Now a hacksaw is actually not meant to saw wood. It is meant to saw metal. Uh, I just put a few here to show you after them doom. But you're only going to use them if you do metal work in your third year. Uh, then we have the panel saws and the cross cut saws. And there's another figure saw. And then I put up your cleaning equipment here. Now it is very important that you actually clean every workshop. It has to do with health and safety. And that because of all the wood dust, it is actually flammable. And if you do not clean regularly, you can set a fire, which isn't such a fun thing, especially because I don't think UNAM will pay if you start a fire. Uh, now you will see, this is where we keep most of our off cuts. It is small pieces that were cut off the wood no? and you can use these freely if you come in and work here. Uh, we won't bother you. You can, uh, can see that some of it is good wood, some of it is poor wood. But it's just off cuts and you can make amazing things with just off cuts. I'll show you later there something that I made in a day from using off cuts. Okay? Then obviously we keep the big wood right here. Now this is normally all the compressed wood. As I say, we keep the real wood in there. So this is what you will mostly use uh, is the compressed wood. Okay. You can see some of the wood is also stored there, but I think this is for a school project. Now you will see that because this is an active workshop, you will see currently things being made or being repaired in the workshop. Please move around them and do not try and trip on it. Okay, this thing here is called a bandsaw. You can see it is actually made to make these small holes and cut it out. If you cut it out like that, most of you will probably know a bandsaw uh, when you cut meat. But this one is used exclusively for wood. Okay. Then this is called the life machine. Now a life machine is rotating a piece of wood that you uh, then shape with these chisels. You'll see they have different shapes and different sizes, various. Now, do you see this block of wood? When you screw it on, you are going to use these things and then shape it. As it goes around, it turns it and you can end up with these nice shapes. You see? Nice. Okay, once again, these are things you are going to use in your third year, not in your second year. And we will assist you with these things. Here's the machine that we actually use to create joints This head actually goes down into the wood and creates a nice joint so that you can put other wood in it. This machine actually pushes wood through it and it planes it so it's nice and smooth. I will show you here that most, some of them that Mr. Manas has made. He has taken the raw wood, run it through the thing and now it is smooth. You will see some of the times it gives a small burn mark if you push it through. 
bottom machine is on and it comes up here at the back now this machine makes such a noise that I normally when it's on try to avoid being in the workshop it is such a nuisance this is called a pillar drill currently I have not put a drill bit in there this is its chuck it is what you put it in uh, it will rotate on its own if I switch it on see it rotates and you bring it down and it goes for you okay the pillow drill is also a good example when we show you pulley systems and felt plan systems and you are going to calculate the speeds of this drive system in your third year okay moving on you can see mr manas does a lot of extra cutting and everything for you third years if you reach third year that is and he will help you assist you he did this last year for all the things before the pandemic struck uh, so <laughs> those third years never got to make this thing and since this year the pandemic is still running strong maybe he's actually gonna give this to you next year okay this is an automatic planer with a combination of a bench saw and you can see here the table saw variation big red button switches it off and if you switch it to the plane now this is this is a machine that does exactly the same work as the planer over there right so I think we've only used this planer on rare occasions Mr. Manas tends to use that machine over there instead of planer here okay but I can remember when we did the libraries um, all the library doors we had to run about what was it 120 doors through this thing to make them all line up neatly okay then we have a rotating sand there if we switch on it rotates there while it's sanding. <laughs> now ironically most of the time we use this thing just to sharpen pencils but it's actually used to shape round pieces of wood uh, it doesn't look like yes there I have a sample yeah, let me go get through there <laughs> it's normally to shape these round pieces so let's go so normally I switch it on and then I go dead. Oh, kickback. Maybe it's not the best thing to try and do that one-handed. <laughs> okay, you will see there is other tools, uh, equipment that are in different states of being repaired. It's another planer, it's the same one as we have there, but while that is a combination, this is a purely just a planer okay you will see that all of them actually has a pipe that goes into extractor you see it it goes up 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 go down 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 and outside there outside there is a building where we collect all the dust okay so you will see when we are working in here we switch all of those things on now it makes a lot of noise so that's why i didn't bother switching it on for you now okay then we have a radio arm saw now this is basically just a saw that you can see it's just running through this you switch it on and it runs through the thing it creates these cuts very accurately very nice but once again your second year you will not be using the radio arm saw you first need to learn some skills and be supervised before we do it for you is that okay now you will see sometimes we stack some chairs here this is because you, when you are here and you are doing drawing classes with the drawing boards you are going to be seated at the workbenches and do all the drawings there okay 
when we are not doing it we stack it back up so it is out of the way is that okay I don't care if it's not okay you will do that now do you see that nice little big red button there now that is a emergency cutoff switch now if you have things like this this is perhaps the most dangerous equipment that we have here this table saw I am actually incredibly scared of this thing uh, for various reasons in most cases this thing will cut off your hand if you're not careful now if something were to happen in this workout and something goes wrong and you get hurt you see your friend get hurt you run towards that thing and you hit it that emergency switch off or cut off switch will instantly cut off all the electricity to all the equipment and it might be the difference between losing a finger and losing a hand okay so remember look for the red switch if something goes wrong hit it okay now I've here some samples of what students did in previous years each time you are going to have your own design but Mr. Mana sometimes gives you a design if he's not happy with the design you came up in your second year okay so these are some spice racks that you can see rotates these are candle hole stick holders this one isn't complete yet but I can show you how it is going and then you have the candlestick which is actually finished and now Mr. Manas will light the doll in a hole there to fit in the candle and put a base on the back now those holes there and there is actually made from the lathe it's not normally supposed to be there that's why you put different pieces of it the most basic thing we make is a nice box you see with hinges and fits in it now you have different things that can fit into it different holders this is all made here and two years ago the students made these organizers you can see they are very nice not all of them are complete and uh, sometimes if you forget your thing here we keep it sometimes we will fix it for you or sometimes we will just show you what not to do now this is an example of what not to do you see the shoddy workmanship shoddy joints and the shoddy connector now this is an example of we are not happy with this one okay if you make something like this we're going to ask you to make something differently okay there's a wine rack that some one students made and a box just a normal box for storage that is used with a router to make that nice shape there okay and this is what i told you that i made in one afternoon for with some scrap wood that i found there it is actually somewhere to place my cell phone while it is in my office obviously i'm using my cell phone now so i cannot show you how it goes but it normally fits in there so once you have woodworking skill you can actually make any small things that you can sell for yourself or just for yourself uh, that's why design and woodworking is actually a very good skill to have okay i cannot think of anything else uh, as i think of anything else i will let you know but this is your woodworking shop now i will make another guide of the metalworking shop which is through that wall <laughs> next door but currently this is the woodworking since your second years you will only work here okay but the third years you can go and you work in a metal working shop okay i am in charge of woodworking mr manas is in charge of metal uh, you will see his office in there as well you can come anytime and ask us a question you can contact us through the whatsapp groups or email and I hope you enjoyed this tour and I will be in contact soon. Thank you.